Ghana, Nigeria, Jollof. Uh, Which one do you prefer? Every time this question comes to me, if I give this answer, people will shout. You if know. I give this answer, people will shout. You know what? Remember that. Your mother food, mm. the one your mom gave you, for me, fancy, mm -hmm. is always the best. It's good to have you back today on People and Places. We want to do something a little different. We are going to learn about a Nigerian community in Ghana. We are exploring the story, history and culture of the Igbo community here in Ghana. And to help us do this, we have a distinguished guest whom we'll meet right after this break. My name is Wanda Mihigan. I'll see you after the break. Welcome aboard. Welcome back from the break. Thank you for staying with us. This is still People in Places. We are inside the royal palace of the Nigerian king of the Igbo community in Ghana. His Royal Majesty Eze, Dr. Chukudi Iheneku Igwe. Thank you. And welcome to the show once again. You've spent 10 years on the throne as diasporan king. How has the journey been for you so far? First of all, I give God Almighty glory and praise who made it possible for me to occupy the throne where we have uh, thousands and millions of people in diaspora over here. But God chooses me to be here by the confirmation of mankind. I thank God Almighty. Uh, ten years of journey is not an easy thing. These ten years of uh, great experience 10 years of um, few enemies around, mm. 10 years of uh, struggling to make sure the throne stands, 10 years of solving people's problems here and there, 10 years of listening to so many stories, mm. whether it's genuine or not, 10 years of uh, also not having time for my children and my wife, 10 years of traveling all around Ghana, bringing Igbo people together, and introducing them to the authority of the land. Mm. Ten years of also meeting Ghanaian kings and queen mothers all over Ghana, um, introducing Igbo people and Igbo culture to them. Ten years of also fighting the best we can to let our people know the laws of Ghana, what that is prohibited for them not to do and what is good for foreigners to do in Ghana. Ten years of great experience. Mm. We thank God for that. So, we want to just boil down to who the Igbo people are. We, we want to understand the word Igbo. What does it mean? Um, as long as I'm concerned, the word Igbo uh, we have never have a proper explanation, the word Igbo. Mm. All I know is we are the tribe of the Igbos. Okay. But we the Igbos traced our origin mm -hmm. from Israel. Okay. 
Okay? So some people will tell you that the name Igbo is also in existence in Israel. Some will tell you this is the name we have come to inherit. So when you say the Igbo, all we know that the Igbos are the people from the east part of Nigeria. And the Igbos are the hardworking people. The Igbos are those that are into entrepreneurship. The Igbos are those into commerce businesses. The Igbos are those that are into, you know, uh, those that work so hard to make life better. Igbos are those that make every environment conducive for them and those that they live around. Igbos are those people that share communion with their people. Igbos are those that want to make sure that if you are around them, if they are progressing, you must progress along with them. Igbos are those people that never allow either you, their brother, or a friend, or their way wishers to suffer, but rather they want to carry you along. So the, the name Igbo, to me, is a name that has a lot of total uh, um, package um, that people all over the world, when you associate with any Igbo man, you will never regret associating with them. So the, the name Igbo has a lot of meanings in it. You mentioned brotherliness and togetherness. That's something I've come to know the Igbo people for. How many states does the Igbo tribe or ethnic group have? Okay, we have five Igbo core states. Okay. Then we have Igbo speaking communities in Delta State and in River State. So but we have hundred percent five Igbo core states that speaks only Igbo. Mm -hmm. But we have two other states that has um, Igbo speaking communities within there. Okay, the, so, the so what are these five states? Yeah, we have uh, Aga State, Anambra State, Ebony State, Enugu State, Igbo State. Right. Eze, can you tell us how the Igbo people came to Ghana? Okay, um, I, I don't think somebody have 100% history mm -hmm. how the Igbos came to Ghana. But you know, migration comes in so many forms. One might be traveling because of business. One might travel because of famine. One might travel because he wants to travel. It comes in so many ways. So we, or I cannot say the first Igbo man that came to Ghana was mm -hmm. in so 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 year. No. But all we know is Igbos came to Ghana at any time of uh, in the existence of Africa. So I cannot say the very first time an Igbo man came to Ghana. But Igbos are living in Ghana. You know, one thing about the Igbos, if an Igbo man moved from here to Kumasi, in the next two, three months, he would like to bring his brother to Kumasi. In the next four months, he would like to bring his brother. Maybe coming to Kumasi, he would say, you know what? Don't get to Kumasi. Stop in Ejesu. Stay here. And let's also expand our business in Ejesu. Some would say, okay, okay, now we have been able to cover Ejesu. Before you know what's going on, two, three people are in Ejesu. From there, you see other people in Suhum. That's how it both move. But I cannot say this exactly when they come to Ghana. But all I know is the movement of every woman attracts his or her brother to move along with them. Because, like I said, we are people that will share, you know, dividends. Dividends, I mean, is when an Igbo man sees a, a good way to make it in life, he will bring his brother along the line. And the kingship, leadership of the Igbo community in Ghana, how does the system work? In the total Igbo community, mm -hmm. we call Igbo community Ahanes and Igbo, we have a president that is in charge, whom his name is uh, President Chief Uche Anyog. Now, he is the president of all the Igbos in Ghana. Now, we now have state meetings that have their various chairmen that rule them. Now, traditionally, I am their king to the glory of God. You know, in Ghana, the way they call Nana, Nene, Ni, that represent king in English. Eze, Igwe, means a king. 
So I am their king that see to all the Igbos that live in Ghana. Right. Then I also have other sub kings in charge of various local governments and the regions. Mm. So the, our leadership here is structured that, like that. So um, the, 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 the chairman and the president of the Igbo community is one, is, is by political, uh, uh, is by election mm -hmm. of our people. Mm -hmm. So there will be election. I'll bring you into the office for three years. After that, you can contest again or someone else will contest. Okay. Become the chairman. But the kingship is not by election. Okay. It's by the love of the people and who can get it done. Mm. And you've mentioned the hierarchy and leadership style of the Igbos in Ghana. I also know that you have honorary chiefs. And for example, you you conferred one of those titles on one of our very own um, gospel musicians, Empress Gifty, recently. What 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 went into that, and what does that symbolize? Okay, you know, um, a king is a father to all, and every king has every right to honor anybody he want to honor by giving him or her a chieftaincy title is for honor a chieftaincy title now there must be a purpose why the king is giving such honor to the person one two somebody can also come on his own and say my king i think i have gotten to the level in life i want to add a chief to my name i want to take crown from you as a chief. Now, the chieftaincy committee of the throne will look at it and interview the person that came by himself, he want to take a chieftaincy to know if he's a, somebody of a, of a good character. If he is, investigations will be, you know, conduct behind him and also in front of him. If he is, then the chieftaincy department will give approval to the king and say, this man merited or this woman merited for the chief time, say, you can crown him. Now, the one the king by himself can tell somebody, I want to give you a chief time, say, there must be a purpose. Maybe the purpose is you a man or you a woman that you are giving to the society. You are supporting the society. You are supporting the less privileged. Or you a man or woman that your voice has gone very far to the to the world either the voice that you are a singer uh, like empress gifty that i count she's a gospel musician in ghana her music has gone very far in the world and the people in ghana love his love her music her music has also become a blessing to many so such person you need to honor her so you can encourage her more if you look at the honor we gave to her last week Sunday. That has also encouraged her more and that has also spread things about her more and the world also want to know her more. So now Jim Ike was also crowned here and okay uh, Princess, I mean uh, um, um, Empress Gifty will give her Ugomandi. Ugomandi meaning the beautiful eagle. You know an eagle is not just a bird you can just see like that and it's a precious bird. So we gave her uh, Ugoma. Um, Jim Ike will give him Ohamadi Kendi. But Ohamadi is a great man that is known for some certain purposes. You know, he's a very good actor that the whole world knows Jim Ike. So we gave him that name to honor him. We did not ask them to give us one dollar, one naira. It is the kingship that I confirm on people and say, I want to give a chief tenancy title. I don't ask you to give me money. It's an honor, honor from my heart, honor from the throne. I give you a chief tenancy title. So we gave her the chief tenancy title to honor her and to add more to her CV and add more strength to her to work more hard. And you know, when you confer chief tenancy to people, it makes them to be cautious of their life. Now, you know, so I'm not, I'm not just who I am before, but now, and a bigger honor has added to me. And that will also help for the promotion of the good work of the throne. 
For if the throne can honor a great woman, a great man like this, it means the throne is worthy to be associated with. There's more we want to learn about your people, especially the traditions of your people. But we want to first take a break and we'll return to focus more on the traditions, peculiar, unique traditions of the Igbo people. We'll learn more from Eze to stay with us. We'll be right back. Let's learn something interesting about Ghana. Etiwa Range Forest Reserve is the largest forest in Ghana, covering a total of 260 square kilometers of Etiwa. The forest is not only rich in life but also in minerals. That's all for this week on Facts About Ghana. Until next time, let's get back and learn more with Wanda and her guests. Many thanks for staying with us. Uh, thank you, Enam, for the tips and facts about Ghana. We are still in the royal palace of His Royal Majesty, the King of Igbo community in Ghana. And just before the break, I told you we were going to delve more into the conversation. Now we are going to focus on the traditions of the Igbo people in Ghana. Usually the kings or leaders work with the staff yes. in your hands. Staff. Okay. Different different staffs. Mm. So uh, it's, it's, we call it authority. Mm. Or four. Mm. Yes, or four is authority. Four. Yes, or four is authority. But you know, in the modern world we have to have different different designs of all these things, okay. you know. Uh -huh. Then we have also the 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 elephant talks. Okay. And so forth. Okay. So you can also decide to have a, a, the long, like this long staff. Okay. You can decide to. Well, it depends on how you want to costume yourself. Right. But the staff you see, we are holding the hands authority. Mm. Yes. Usually, when you see kings, like it was exhibited at the recent Yam Festival, they greet with the staff three times. What does that mean? Is 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 um. You know, in our Igbo, only the title holders that greet in that way three okay. times. Okay. Um, when you greet, we have four market days. Eke, Ori, Afo, Nkwo. These are four market days that Igbos used to count their weeks. Okay. We don't count our weeks like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We count by the market. Remember that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, these things are by the counting of the, the English people. Mm -hmm. But before the Westerners come to Africa, we already exist in Africa, existing. so we count our days by the four market days. So when they say that three is is Eke, Ori, Afo, Nkwo. So the three market days that they count. Some also count it by their title, mm. some count it by their symbols. So, but now the world has changed. The global village has changed a lot of things. So now, whether you're a title holder, you're not a title holder, you see people doing that. But normally, you cannot do that if you are not a title holder. I also would like to understand, I mean, during the festival, I noticed some people were wearing war smocks with a lot of symbols on it. That's something that's similar to um, the war smocks that people wear in Ghana, especially in the northern part of Ghana. You see, when the warriors, in, you know, in olden days, the warriors are known to be the native doctors mm -hmm. or people that native doctors prepared them to go for war. All those symbols become the symbol of their juju, their ghosts. Uh -huh, because when a native doctor prepare you to go to war, either he puts medicine, in your body that prevents guns not to get into you 
or he put medicine on your body that will dictate where the enemies are, or medicine in your body that will give you strength, or medicine in your body that will give you the power to, for you to be able to shoot a target, <laughs> or give you medicine that no matter, even if the, 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 the gun get to you, you're not going to die. So those symbols are different, different medicines they put on their body in those in the in olden days. Now, because the world has become a global village, like I keep saying, uh, people are now using those things as a fashion. Okay. But those days, not a fashion. Okay. When you see them, like when you see Ezem Moore come out, Ezem Moore is the leader of the gods. When Ezem Moore come out, you can see his body is fortified. Mm. Like they also the warriors here in Ghana, you see the fortified. So those things is not just mama. Those things are, is is hundred percent African powers. But now people design it and you know it's normal it's costume, one. yes. Okay. okay. Your festival, I know about the Yam Festival. Yeah, we'll celebrate the uh, Yam Festival. Okay, let me just say, okay, say this way. Everybody in Ibo land celebrate Yam Festival. This is what we acquire from our forefathers. It's heritage. Okay. In the same Ibo land, People celebrate different things. Mm -hmm. Some people celebrate rice. Okay. Some people celebrate their um, 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 pami, pam, pam, pam wine. Pam wine. It depends. Now, some people celebrate wrestling. Mba, we call it mba. Okay. Uh, so, um, even next year, 2023, 20, I want to introduce the wrestling. The Dumbaya Festival. Yes, we call it Umba. So there are so many things that we celebrate in Ibo land. But the major celebration of every Ibo man is Yam Festival. What's the history behind the, the Yam Festival? A the, brief history. Okay, the history is uh, a Thanksgiving. It's a Thanksgiving. You know, it's a time of harvest. Mm -hmm. That we are thanking God for giving us life to go to the farm, plant our crops, and he has given us life mm -hmm. to harvest all the crops that we've planted. So we are thanking God for that opportunity. And now asking God to give us the opportunity, the grace, the resources, the money, the strength, the manpower, the manure, the fertile land, for we to plant our crops again for next season. It's all about Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Then among all the crops, the one that our forefathers celebrate a lot is the yam. Okay. So okay. it's all about Thanksgiving. When we say yam festival, it's all about Thanksgiving, like a harvest. Thanking God for giving us the, the opportunity. And now we are alive and we are harvesting. Also ask God, to receive the souls of those that died mm -hmm. along the process in peace and give us life to, you know, um, plant and harvest in the next season. As I understand, the Igbo people are very cultural people. What kind of music do you enjoy? What kind of dance do the Igbo people dance? Can you take us through a little bit of your culture? Okay. We have different, different Igbo music. We have a music we call Igbeze. Igbeze is kind of a royal dance. They, they beat the drum very slowly. We have Oja, the flute. You see my boy that blew the flute. We have Oja. We have high life music. Okay. Okay? Okay. Uh, like the way we have Ghana high, high life, life music. We have high life music. We have uh, different, different music in different areas. We have what we call it Bunango. Mm -hmm. Like in my village, we dance in Bunango. Okay? So it's a seasonal seasonal uh, festival dance, mm -hmm. seasonal uh, cultural dance that will display every two, two years. Mm -hmm. There are some communities that display their own every year. They call it Kurosha. Mm -hmm. some, some dance in Mango. You see the masquerade you saw there? Mm -hmm. Mango. Some dance uh, Ekeleke, some dance Owo, some dance Okonko, some dance uh, Ikripo Hafia. There are so many, 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 many different, different um, uh, 
dances. Uh, culture dance. Okay. I mean, cultural dancers display, mm. you know, within the Igbo land. Okay. There's no particular one. Mm. But, uh, and naming. This is also something I've observed. There's a lot of chuku in mm. Igbo names. And I understand if, um, chuku is God in the Igbo language. Mm. Is there any particular reason why you have a lot of chuku in your names? Okay. Igbos, we have too much faith in the Lord, God Almighty. So almost everybody attaches God to their children's name. And the other way around, Igbos also name their children according to the event of that time. Or the circumstances at the pregnant, pregnant time of their wife. Or or the harvest time, or the hard time, or the good time. You understand? So the Igbos look at the names like that, but they always attach God, because we love God a lot. Like my name, Chukude. Chukude Bere, that's a complete name, Chukude Bere. God is merciful. Okay. Some answer Chukude, God is alive. Mm. God, people answer Chuku Emezie. God has done it. People answer um, Chine Merem. Mm. God is doing it for me. Some people answer uh, um, Chibundum. God is my life. It's so many people answer Chuku Emeka. God has done it. People answer uh, Chioma. God is good. People answer Ogei Chikama. Like my first daughter is okay, chicken. My God's time is the best. Uh, my first daughter was in her mom's stomach for 22 months. So immediately we gave birth to her, I called her okay, chicken. God's time is the best. Wow. You see, so based on the circumstances of her birth, I gave her that name, okay, chicken. God's time is the best. Because we will try the best we can. Doctors, nurses, churches, and all that. God says no. When the time comes, the baby come alive. No caesarean, nothing. So wow. God's time is the best. So get them. That's amazing. Marriage. Do Igbos encourage intermarriage? I mean, do they marry from other ethnic tribes? Do they marry from other countries? Or they really like to marry from within themselves? With the history we know about the Igbos, centuries ago, mm -hmm. Igbos always want to marry their fellow Igbos. Okay. Even the Bible said it's marrying your own tribe. Okay. So our forefathers maintained that. But as we are growing up, things are changing. People travel from one point to another. Mm -hmm. People travel from one country to another. You find love anywhere you are. So yeah. If you find love anywhere you are, you have to break some certain protocols and carry on your life that way. Mm. So now, Igbos are encouraging intermarriage, intermarriage okay. from different tribes and different countries. Eze, let's talk about food. Um, yam is well, a You know, staple. my wife is a Ghanaian. Oh, really? Yes. That's very interesting. My wife is a Ghanaian. My wife is wow. from uh, Anomabo. That's Central really region. nice. And the mother is yes. from Birua. Wow. So I've married for 24 years now. Wow. So you met her in Ghana? I met her in Ghana. Beautiful. So I married a Ghanaian. And many of us married to Ghanaians also. Beautiful. So these are also to let the people of the world know that it's not compulsory, you must marry from your tribe. The you world is lie. the same. But that's, the most important really thing is nice. the both of you love yourselves mm. and maintain your family levels and family. Uh, respect. Oh, right. So, food, the food of Igbos is um, aside the yam, which I hear is one of your staples. Apart from yam, we have cocoa yam, we have cassava, we have uh, okwa, we have uh, oba, mm. we have uh, ona. Okay. We have. Um, we we'll have different things in it. If you come to other things, we we'll also have what we call opo. But they use it to prepare soup. 
Okay. We have uh, Egusi, we have Obono, mm. Mm. we have Achi, we have Ofo, um, we have Ugiri, we have uh, Oha, we have uh, Ogo, okay. we have Untorogba. Um, these are things that we eat, mm. a lot of them. We have uh, Mbobofe, we have uh, we have um, Otase, we have Ozoza, we have uh, Nchongu. That's Kenya, a lot Kenya of call it Saint in... Leaf. Okay. Yes, we have also we have Bita Leaf. Uh -huh. And which Ghanaian food have you enjoyed in all your 27 years of living in Ghana? You know one good thing here. My wife is a caterer. Wow. So she cooks all kind of food. A lot so of local. All her food is nice. <laughs> My beautiful wife, uh, Queen Liberty. Mm. Her food is beautiful. All kind of food she cooks. So I, I, you can't even say this one is better than this one. Mm. All her foods are good. A bang fry is good. Okoto. 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 Okoto is good. Uh, uh, Fanti Kenke is good. Kakra mm. uh, soup, what is it? Krankra soup. In Krankra In soup is always good. You, you've uh, tried a lot of Ghanaian Oh, yes, 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 yes. I a can lot. imagine. A lot. I can imagine. But yours is, is an interesting combination Nigerian, specifically Igbo, and a beautiful Ghanaian wife. That means a lot of Nigerian food and a lot of Ghanaian food. Yes. That brings me to the question of the Jollof Wars. <laughs> Ghana, Nigeria, Jollof. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? <laughs> this, this is a difficult question. <laughs> Every time this question comes to me, if I give this answer, people will shout. You if know. I give this answer, people will shout. You know what? Remember that. Your mother food, mm. the one your mom gave you, for me, fancy, mm -hmm. is always the best. Mm. No matter how beautiful your wife will cook, mm -hmm. your mom food is always the best for you. So I said, my mom cooked the love rice better than anybody in the world. Okay. okay. Okay? As long as she's alive. But if I go home now, I, I'm going to eat her, her food. And my wife is away. If we travel to village, I eat always from my mom's kitchen. But my wife will cook better, better, powerful soup, powerful food. But that one my mom cooked is the best for me. So as long as my mom is still alive, my mom's jollof rice is the best jollof rice in the world. <laughs> That's a very interesting answer. Very interesting. Okay. Now we want to wrap up the first part of this conversation. I want to ask how you would be able to, how can you tell somebody is an Igbo in Ghana? I mean, if you see somebody, what identifies a person as an Igbo? Most Igbos are fair in complexion. Okay. Most Igbos have forehead. Okay. Most Igbos have flat kind of hair, mm. back hair. Then, most Igbos are very proud. Okay. Most Igbos are a good communicator. Mm. Mm. Most Igbos are, are good in business. Before you can sit with an Igbo man, only one second, two seconds, you must know it's an Igbo man. Because the kind of ideas that come out of him, you will know, oh, Charlie, he's a Nigerian man. Mm -hmm. And the Igbo man is always difficult to see an Igbo man that, that, that uh, does not speak in wisdom. Okay. Every Igbo man speaks wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when you hear them speaking, you will know this is an Igbo man. The okay. way we try to, because we are not English people, we are mm -hmm. few Africans. Mm -hmm. So we try the best we can to carry our language along with along. us. Then, Igbo men also, by their dressing, mm -hmm. every Igbo man always want to dress good. And every Igbo man also want to dress, dress like this our local attire. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you say it, you say, oh my God, this, uh, the, the first, even if, you say it's a Nigerian. Every Ghanaian, people around the world, when they see Nigerians, their mind, first of all, is an Igbo man. Then from there to interview him mm -hmm. or from there to discuss with him, then you realize whether 
is Igbo or Hausa or okay. Yoruba. These okay. are the major three tribes. Right. So there are a lot of signs around Igbo man that you that will make you to know Igbo man. And what do Igbo men and women do, like profession-wise, mostly? What do they do in Ghana? Thread. Okay. Thread. We're all over the market, all over the street. Thread. Mm -hmm. Thank you Where so to much. Commas. Thank you so much, no Eze, place. for speaking to us and giving us some insight, interesting insights mm -hmm. about the people of Igbo. Mm -hmm. But this is just the first part. Um, we are going to speak again, uh, where, where we'll concentrate more on your stay in Ghana and how the Igbo people relate to Ghanaians. But thank you so much for your Welcome. time. So that will be all for this edition of People and Places. There's more to enjoy and to stay with us um, in the next edition. We'll bring you more. I've been speaking to the king, the diasporan king of the Igbo community here in Ghana. He is His Royal Majesty Eze, Dr. Chukudi Ihenetu. Pardon me if I didn't really get the name. I'm trying. So we'll see you next time. My name is Wanda Mihegan. Stay safe.